Okay, let's all meet on our mats. We're gonna start in Vajrasana. We'll do our seated meditation in this posture where the legs are together. It's called Thunderbolt Pose in English. The knees are together, the feet are together, and the spine has a really nice length and posture here. So we're just gonna start like that. Hands can be on the thighs, in a mudra if you like mudras, or in your lap, or by your side, whatever feels good for you today. Close your eyes and let's enter our practice together. The way we enter our practice is to always bring our awareness to our body, to our breath, to our posture. And we start with that in our seated meditation, but we use it throughout the whole practice. So just by taking this moment to do it in a nice seated meditation, it allows us to really become familiar with it, become comfortable with it, and hopefully take it with us beyond. See where your body is today. How your breath is moving. If your shoulders are nice and open, or if they're starting to collapse forward. No judgment, just observation of what's going on in your body, being aware of what happens in your seated meditation. Slowly start to open the eyes. And we'll enter our nice upper body warm up. Inhale the hands open wide as possible, reaching the heart forward as if you want your shoulder blades to touch in the back. Exhale, bring the right arm over your chest and the left hand underneath. Come into this internal rotation and stretch compression here in the inner right shoulder. Taking a couple deep breaths here. Inhale, open. Exhale, switch sides. Left hand comes across the shoulder. Right hand locks in that arm close to the body. And the left arm is active. It's not just inside of the body. We want it to be active here. Opening all those fingers, making sure all the muscles are activated as well. Inhale, the hands open. Exhale, we're gonna take the right elbow with our left hand. And just bring it down, opening the whole side of our shoulder now. You can stay here, just pushing on that elbow. Or you can come into a Gomukhasana arms, cow face pose arms, where you bring that left hand behind and bind the fingers, like so. You can also use a strap and just keep pulling on the strap to bring the hands closer or grab onto your shirt or just like energetically push the hands towards each other without actually grabbing anything. Or you can stay up top holding the elbow. Lots of variations. Whatever you chose, we'll take a couple deep breaths. Inhale, open up the hands. 
exhale, switch sides. We'll take the left elbow with the right hand just for a moment before we continue on to our variations. And continue on to your variation or stay holding the elbow. I'm sure you'll see from this stretch the differences in your shoulders immediately. It's pretty obvious in this in this pose, in this um, arm position. Just be aware of that, of the imbalance in the body, and that's totally normal. Every body has a stronger side and a less dominant side. Um, so just be aware of it without judgment. Whenever you want to work on your less dominant side, make sure you're still evening it out because you don't want to work too much on the dominant, the less dominant side, where it then becomes the dominant side. So still, you need a balanced practice. Inhale, the hands open. Exhale, hands down on your lap. Inhale, the hands come up. And we're gonna start closing and opening our fists, really warming up the whole arm here, warming up the forearm, warming up the wrist, warming up the fingers, the shoulders. We're gonna start slow, so just open and close, open and close. Make sure you're still breathing. Just gonna be here for a moment. Maybe picking up the pace a little bit. Feel the burn. We really want to warm up those arms before we get into more complicated postures where we're balancing on our hands and making sure that we're properly warmed up throughout our whole arms and wrists and shoulders. Keep going. A little bit longer and slowly release. Nice. We're gonna take the fingers together with our last wrist exercise on our Vajrasana posture and do an eight angle with your hands or infinity sign, whatever resonates with you. Switch your fingers from whatever is more comfortable for you if your left thumb's on top. So switch it so your right thumb's on top now. And keep going except start in the opposite direction of whatever you did before, if you can remember. Slowly release the hands, bring them behind you on the fingertips, not on the palms of the hands. And open your chest forward as if you wanted to come into a deep back bend, opening the shoulders as far as you can behind you, connecting the shoulder blades together, opening the heart forward. You can keep the head neutral here or drop it back, whatever feels comfortable for you. We're going to take a couple deep breaths here with this nice open chest. Exhale down. 
couple more at your own pace. Salutations. You can walk the legs out, shake your tail, whatever feels good for you to warm up those hamstrings. Maybe moving the weight back from your hands and then to your feet. It's also a really good practice because in downward dog you want to move the weight towards your feet. So if that's a bit of a challenge for you, then maybe practice this move where you're moving the weight back and forth. Walk the feet towards the top of the mat. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And let's begin. We're gonna go over one round slowly just to make sure we have all the main postures done and then we'll have some fun with it. Toes together, big toes. No locking in the knees, make sure the weight stays in the center of your body. Inhale the hands up, upward hand posture, look towards your fingers. Exhale, forward fold, head to knees. You can do this with bent knees if you need to, if you wanna work on more of a straight spine. Inhale, halfway lift, look forward, long spine. Again, you can come towards your thighs if you need that extra help to find that nice long spine. Place the hands on the ground, hold your breath, walk back towards plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Elbows stay close to the body, 90 degrees, and then inhale up to up dog. Legs above the floor, pressing into your hands, chest comes in between the arms, inhale, look up. Tuck the toes, hips come all the way up, downward dog. Hands should be shoulder width, Feet should be a little bit smaller than the hips width. Pushing the weight towards your feet. Long spines here. Hips are tilted towards the sky. Shoulders are externally rotated. Make sure you're activating those shoulders and not just collapsing into them. As if you want to spread your shoulder blades apart. Look in between your hands, walk or jump. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, forward fold, head to knees. Inhale, rise. Exhale, rest, samastiti. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, the hands come down towards the ground, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Hold the breath, coming back towards plank. Exhale, in your plank, don't go down to a chaturanga. Gonna start doing rock climber legs here. Just start running in your plank. The feet should get towards the center of the mat or the center of your plank pose. And just keep going. Make sure you're pressing down into your fingertips. Keep going. And we'll meet back in our plank. Inhale deeply, straighten out the body. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Take a moment in your down dog to catch your breath. Look in between your hands, walk or jump forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, ready, rise up towards the sky, hands together. Exhale, rest. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, come back towards the ground, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Hold the breath, hands come down towards the ground, plank. 
Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, up, dog. Exhale, down, dog. We're gonna lift that right leg towards the sky. Inhale, exhale. Bring the right knee to your right armpit. Inhale, leg up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, leg up. Exhale, knee to left armpit. Inhale, leg up. And last thing, we're gonna take that right leg as if we're going to our left armpit and open the leg straight out and come onto our right hand, slowly moving the weight to your right hand and lift that left arm up towards the sky. Coming into a variation of side plank. Couple deep breaths here. Move back to center, left hand comes towards the ground. Right hand comes up towards, the right leg comes up towards the sky. Inhale, exhale to down dog. Let's do the other side. Inhale, left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, knee to left armpit. Inhale, leg up. Knee to nose, exhale. Inhale, leg up. Exhale, knee to right armpit. Inhale up. Exhale as if we're going to that right arm again. And open that left leg straight out. Tilt towards your left hand. Opening up to a nice open side plank variation. Couple deep breaths here, looking up towards your right hand. Slowly move back to center. Right hand comes back down towards the ground. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, downward dog. Look in between your hands, walk or jump. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, sound sticky heat. Take a moment to open up the body, open up the hands, breathe deeply. Hmm. Feel the rush in your body. Allow the wrist to relax for a moment. You can wiggle out the fingers, shake out the hands, upper body class, so we'll be a lot on our hands. If you always need to take a rest in child pose, feel free to do that. Or if you wanna come down onto your elbows and do the postures on your forearms, that's also okay. Just a couple variations before we continue. Coming back towards the top of your mat, Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Hold your breath. Walk or jump, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. From here, we'll move our body into our planks. Rolling the body forward. We're gonna twist towards the left hand, coming into a side plank. You could choose to stay in a regular side plank, a supported side plank with the left leg on the ground as a stand, or maybe a starfish coming into a more complicated, challenging variation. You can also grab the big toe and the fingers together. That's a part of your practice, or if you're feeling extra fun and challenging today. Whatever variation you chose, Let's take a couple deep breaths here in our static plank variation. Side plank. Vashistasana in Sanskrit. From here we'll add some movement. So press into that hand again. Exhale, bring the hand underneath your left armpit into a little twist. Inhale, the hand up. Exhale, twist. Inhale, hand up. Exhale, twist up. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Come back to your regular plank. 
and let's switch sides. Moving on to the right arm, feet together, regular plank, supported plank, bringing that right knee down towards the ground. Or a more complicated, lifting the left leg up into starfish, or grabbing the big toe and the fingers together. Whatever you chose, let's take a couple deep breaths here before we add some movement. And exhale, bring the hand under your right armpit. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Twist under that right armpit. Inhale up. Exhale down. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Come back to your regular plank. And from here, we'll come down onto our elbows. Releasing from our wrists now. Working on our shoulders in different ways. Lower the hips down to your forearm plank. Taking a couple deep breaths here. Lift the right leg for a moment. Switch legs. Left leg. Both feet on the ground. And start walking the feet towards your head as much as you can. Coming into dolphin pose. This is a great shoulder strengthening posture. You can just be in this pose for as long as you can. And it will create amazing changes in your shoulder. You can let the head relax here or look in between your hands. Inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale down. Inhale, left leg. Exhale down. Keep going. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Couple more. You got this. Keep breathing. Keep going at your own pace. Last one. And we'll meet in child pose. Drop the knees. Take a rest. Head on the ground. You can bring the hands in front of you or beside your legs to give those shoulders a nice little break, holding the heels. Up to you. Ooh. From here, we'll bring the hands by our knees and we'll drop the crown of our head on the floor. And come into this variation of child pose where we really let the weight of our body come to our head for a moment. Also, this is relaxing. Also, it's a nice prep pose for tripod headstand. So if you want, you can stay here or you can work on maybe coming onto your toes and bringing your knees onto your onto the back of your arms, onto your triceps. See if you can even balance with your feet off the ground just from here without lifting the legs up into your headstand. And maybe bringing the legs up slowly, coming into a slow headstand here. Balance with the weight on your head and your hands. Your arms should feel super active here. Whether with the, we're with the knees on our arms still or up in a headstand, the arms are super active here. Don't let them die down. Keep the elbows nice and tight. Don't open them too far. And slowly we'll come down and meet back into our child pose. Hmm. 
So proud of you guys. <laughs> From our child's pose, we'll bring the hands forward. And we'll start to enter puppy pose, bringing the hands forward, the hips stay up high. And sliding the hand, we want our chest to hit the ground. Ideally, your chin will be on the ground, but if you're not that deep enough into your shoulders, you can just rest your forehead, or you can bring a big pillow or a block to rest your head on. If this is too much for your shoulders, you can stay on the forearms and just work from this half puppy pose. If you're okay all the way through, let's do it. <sighs> Breathing deeply in your puppy pose, make sure the hips stay high. It's a really beautiful heart opener, shoulder opener. Pressing our hearts up onto the ground or down onto the ground. Also opening our throats, our throat chakra. If you're still looking for a challenge, you can start to go onto your toes and straighten your knees off the ground, straightening the legs. Or you can stay in the regular puppy pose. <laughs> Just offering variations, it's always fun to learn. If you're doing it with straight legs, that's extended puppy pose. And we'll slowly slide down onto our bellies. And come onto Sphinx pose. Hands will be in front of you like in a forearm plank or dolphin pose. All the poses where the forearms are on the ground, we want to make sure that the arms are parallel to each other and not starting to internally rotate where the fingers are moving closer to each other and the elbows are still outwards. We want to reverse that effect in our shoulders. It happens from sitting on the computer, from driving, being on our phones. Usually our shoulders are always internally rotated. So the hands will have a tendency to come closer together. Let's try to fight that and keep our arms nice and parallel to each other. Working on that external rotation of the shoulders and that nice, beautiful posture. Press into your hands, into your fingers, into your elbows, and open that heart in front of you. The head can be neutral or looking up slightly. Feeling a mild, super, super mild compression in the lower back. We'll strengthen our shoulders. Breathe deeply. Feeling what happens in your body with every breath. Whenever you inhale, you lengthen and you rise up. Whenever you exhale, you compress a little bit and ground a little bit more. Start to lean towards your left side and grab that right foot behind you and then turn back forward as if you're in a sphinx pose still, you want the chest to be forward and press onto the top of your foot. Coming into a nice quad stretch here. Some people call this a frog pose stretch. Stay looking forward, stay opening in the chest, stay leaning onto your left arm, activating that whole left shoulder, keeping you stable. I love a good combo stretch. <laughs> and slowly release. Let's switch sides, moving onto the right side slightly, so you can grab your left foot from behind. Holding on the top of the foot, turning back forward, keeping the weight strongly and balanced on your right arm. And press into that foot, getting a nice deep quad stretch, not too hard. Moving slowly, using your breath to always go deeper, moving with the body, not moving against the body or forcing or pushing too hard.
right, as much as possible not to collapse in that right shoulder. We're still pushing off of the ground, keeping the chest lifted, heart forward. Slowly release, leg comes back towards the ground. Full body will come towards the ground now and we'll bring our hands behind our back and interlace them. Taking a moment to bring them as much as you can overhead. You can be on your chin, on your forehead, or on the side of your face. You can be on the side so I can see the screen. <laughs> just push the hands overhead just for a moment, feeling this nice shoulder stretch while the body is relaxed. Super isolated in the shoulders right now. From here, bring the head forward while the hands are still up. Inhale, lift the chest and pull the hands behind you, coming into a variation of locust pose with, active, with an active shoulder stretch and shoulder strengthener. Breathing deeply, stay active in the shoulders. And slowly release. From here, we'll grab our feet. After we did those quad stretches, after we open those shoulders, we're gonna come into bow pose. Inhale, rise up in the chest as much as you can. So the whole belly is on the floor. You can stay here with the thighs on the floor as well if you don't wanna go too deep into the back bend or too active in your posture right now. Just work out opening that chest and, and shoulders. For an extra challenge, you'll lift up the legs and just the belly will be on the floor. Keep kicking your feet into your hands, coming into a nice back bend and entering bow pose, Dhanurasana. Try to keep the knees as close together, don't open them too far. The direction here is up, not outwards. And slowly release. Bring the feet back towards the ground. Let's take a moment in Makarasana, crocodile pose. Hands will be together in front, forehead on the hands, and heels in the back will be twisted inwards, toes will be outwards. Just taking a couple deep breaths here, releasing any tension from the back in those couple of back bends. And we'll turn on to our backs together slowly. Ah. Laying on the back now. We'll bring our knees into our chest. And give them a nice squeeze, holding opposite elbows, bringing the head up towards your knee, coming into wind release pose, Suptapala Muktasana in Sanskrit. And slowly release the head, bring the hands outside shoulder height, releasing the hands on towards the ground. And just start rocking the knees side to side at whatever pace is comfortable for you. Just giving your back a little massage. And let's come back to center and release the body into Shavasana. The legs will be as wide as the mat, or maybe a bit wider. Hands by your side, palms facing up. Bring the shoulders as far away as possible from the ears, and then release them back down towards the ground, making sure we're completely relaxed in the shoulders. Breathe deeply. Giving your body this time to heal. Time to reflect. 
reflect on your practice today without judgment, just observation. couple more full inhales and complete exhales. Feel free to continue your shavasana after the practice. Or slowly meet me in a comfortable seat. Always trying to move with your eyes closed, connecting to the energy in your body, to the movement in your body from the inside. Feeling the circulation flow back down to your legs from the top of your body. Connecting to your normal breathing pattern. Center. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Love you all.